Hello, my name is Nigel Griffiths, so we can IBM Power Systems on AIX and Linux, and in this case, at the Virtual I.O. server as well. You can see my hotmail there. If you want to contact me and ask questions, please do so. The tiny URL there in Extract Plus is the big web article we have about a lot of the information and where you download the code from and sample graphs and all sorts of things that are in there. Very big page, go and have a look already created two videos one on the performance graphs this is generated by grafana we now have a 70 that's seven zero graphs in there and a whole bunch of uh, single stats which are things like numbers and configuration details on top of that there's another video on data handling so how the data is pulled out of the hmc transformations we put in what the data looks like when it's in influx db and then look at the actual stats see what they are where they're documented now then we're going to look at the installation and setup of an extract plus so here's my architectural diagram we just sort of zoomed into it a bit in here we can see the data is going to come off the uh, hmc on these bits in here there's no changes required which is really good there's no agent involved in here to install you must have fairly up-to-date operating systems in or n minus one the same with the system firmware that's the uh, hypervisor has to be current the virtual io server has to be three point something at the moment 3.1 on the hmc we need a fairly new level of code which is uh, 940 or 950 when i'm making this video i have tested it with some older stuff but i'm not going to really support it if that goes wrong because of the hmc code is old i have seen hmcs particularly if you got the intel based hmcs they go pretty slowly it's very evident when we pull the data out of the hmc we're also mainly supporting the power 8 and power 9 and power 10 machines i have done a little bit of testing with power 7 but again i don't really want to support you if you're running this old computers now the two big ones in here is influxdb and grafana we have to have those installed to get to store the data in the database and grafana does all the graphing if you already have these installed then you're 95 percent complete the actual putting in of n extract plus will take you about five to ten minutes tops you may have installed influxdb and grafana because you're using another tool that i uh, write called njmon or nimon data collectors they run collecting the Detail stats from AIX and Linux on any platform, including Power and the virtual IO server. If you haven't, here's a five second view of what's going on in here. These are two vendors supplying open source software, so you can download it and compile it yourself if you want to. They also offer an enterprise version. It has some extra features, typically the HA and those sorts of things, backup and restores, and they offer full 24 by seven support you'd run that on your own computers uh, in your computer room. The alternative is they both have cloud additions. Well, they'll actually run it um, on the cloud. You don't get involved with any of the hardware at all. You'll have a uh, certificate to log into their service so that it's all uh, SSL encrypted when you're talking and saving your data. That works fine as well. I'm going cheap and cheerful. I'm using the open source. I have played with the cloud additions too. Note, if you want to, the enterprise version, it has to be on your AMD 64 Intel type processors. They don't do a power version. Now, if you're interested in running the enterprise version on power, phone them up, complain, email them say you want to spend money on their product if they only support power and if we get you know two dozen people phoning up wanting to give them money they may actually change that decision now in fluxy being grafana uh, will run uh, happily on your windows 10 or your apple mac and lots of other different computers i regard these as uh, personal computers and laptops and things not a good idea for for hosting a service that you want running all the time. If you shut down your personal computer overnight, then the stats will get lost. We won't actually have them being collected. It also runs on uh, AIX. I'm not gonna cover that in this video. There's actually on my AIX per blog, there's a long article on how to install it on AIX. Very, very simple and very much like the installing it on Linux. So in this video, we're going to cover the open source version. We're gonna install it on Linux on AMD 64 and Linux on power that's where i tend to run it because i've got plenty of power hardware in my computer room right then 
Now, don't blink. We're going to do this fast. Remember, all the details are in that main article where you download the code. So phase one, HMCs, we've got to switch on the data collection. By default, it's switched off. You may have put it on for other reasons, but uh, we definitely want to make sure it's on now for the servers you want to manage the performance. I recommend you start off with a half a dozen or so, and then once you've got the grass working, maybe you want to switch them on for all the other ones too. So you log into the HMC, you click on the uh, all systems in here, you select one you want, a little pie chart on each of these, um, and then you click on that, and if you get a zero and it all grayed out, then it's off, it's not collecting. So you click on that uh, button under data collection, do it firmly just once and it can take a couple of minutes before it actually switches over and looks like this so i've done it on a different machine it's got a nice green and i think it has a one or an uppercase i or something i don't know that's on and it's pretty obvious that it's collecting some stats because there's a whole bunch of stats coming out in here which can be quite useful in its own right do that well before you actually want to start collecting the data and looking at the graphs All right next up phase two influx db very simple to install so we have uh, linux on power over here on the left and linux on amd64 or intel over here the only thing that's different in these two cases is where you get the download uh, over here it's actually the influx data that's the company behind influx database uh, com you look in there and when i actually made this video it's at one point eight four blah 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 over here if you want the power version then the guys at uh, power devops marvelous bunch of guys they can put all sorts of things for our uh, power computers and they have a little page called InfluxDB and have a list of all the downloads available there then you can see this is the same on both cases we're going to do a sudo yum local install of the package you just downloaded then you're going to use um, system control start influx database enable it so that it comes up when you reboot and then you can check the status you get a whole lot of stuff out it doesn't make much sense to me but anyway then you need to create a database within the database it's just a sort of area inside the database to separate the different sorts of data you might have in here you'd have a different database for a jmod for example so we type in influx that's the cli for the influx database create the database and the name and then exit can't be any simpler than that then if you haven't got the influx db client installed then you run the sudo python 3 minus m pip install influx db and it'll go and uh, load that python 3 client so we can talk to influx db with a python function same for the uh, intel guys and on to phase three the n extract plus code itself so you go to the article on the AI expert blog find the download link it's about three quarters of the way down there's a little zip file here it's just 35k when it's zipped up so it's tiny there's two little programs in there a config file that we'll look at in a second there's a grafana dashboard.json file and the readme so we're now going to unzip the uh, zip file in its own directory um, set up the config file there's one called example.conf you rename this to something more sensible for you maybe the name of the host name of the hmc or something like that so in here the first three lines are the hmc details the host name username and password it's not rocket science in here you can probably work out what's going on better to use the uh, fully defined host name in there We've created a user called PCM admin that is the person that will log in and extract the data. That helps track in who is actually using the HMC if you look at the users and tasks. Of course, this password is a bit too simple for us as well. Then we have the I numbers in here. We have the host name of where InfluxDB is. I run this on the same machine as InfluxDB, so it's local host in here, but it could be a different server. Then we've got the port number. The 8086 is the default port number that InfluxDB will use you can go to the InfluxDB configuration file and change that if you really want to then we have a username a password and remember we created a database inside InfluxDB so it's the n extracts so this is telling extract plus to put it into the right database inside InfluxDB right once you set this up uh, edited this um, you need these curly brackets so uh, this is the name of the file at the top so we're now going to run it so let's run it by hand and we can see the output coming out it explains what's going on and we have the uh, n extract plus 
py, that's python, example.conf, or whatever you rename that file to. It'll output a couple of screens worth of things if you've got a handful of machines. And you can watch that run, make sure it runs cleanly, and then use cron tab to run that hourly. Right then, on to phase four. Now we've got hourly data coming into the influx DB. Let that run for a little while. And then we're going to set up Grafana to graph the new data. Now you're probably thinking, hang on, haven't we seen this before? But no, this is Grafana now instead of influx DB. Again, if we're using the power computers, then we go to Power DevOps. Great guys. I actually met them at a Power Technical University uh, last year or the year before. Uh, and I would have bought them a drink, but the, all the drinks were free. <laughs> I really like these guys. They've really helped me out. Lots of stuff on those websites, but lots of other tools as well. Okay, so again, we download them from either DevOps or the grafana.com you see the dl i think that means download you follow your nose and um, we've got a whole list of different platforms right again we can start it up we enable it so that uh, on reboot grafana gets started again we can check the status that's just a positive confirmation it's running then we're going to browse to the grafana server i use the same machine that i'm using in flux db in but you don't have to then you log in with a uh, you know the colon 3000 that's the port number you log in as admin it's not has a password when you start up so you can actually set the admin password at that point and you'll go to create a data source which is our influx db see the article for details it's quite uh, simple to do right then one final thing we've got our data we've got our grafana running but we need some graphs well in grafana it's called a dashboard this is actually a json file for all the descriptions of what data you want to show what sort of graph you want what sort of colors they are where to place it on the screen and all this sort of thing so where do you get that well if you go to grafana.com grafana dashboards scroll down a page and there'll be a, like a search it's actually called filter so you type in there an extract plus and so we find all the dashboards that have a name with an extract plus in it and there's just one at the moment then you should find the id number on that page if you click on that page then at the moment that's 13819 that may be different if we have multiple different graphs available there's also a copy in that an extract plus zip file that we downloaded the file name looks something like this uh, notice a dot json file so we're, we're getting used to using json aren't we now when you go into grafana on your browser on the left hand side there's a plus sign this is for adding new things and we click on import and you can either add the file name presumably you've copied the file down to your workstation um, or you can type in the id number in which case it will go to grafana.com to go and find the dashboard with the right number when it's uh, you tell it to uh, load that then it will ask you for which do you want to be the default database well for us it's the n extract plus database that makes one little change to the dashboard so it's linked into your database in case it had a different name to my one when i created the dashboard and then you'll select your server at the top your vo server and your lpar and you have a whole set of graphs that you can look at and uh, change between machines or between VO servers and between LPARs on a particular server. Okay, that's it. Done that very quickly. Like I said, all the real details are on the article. You can see that it's gonna take you maybe half an hour, maybe the first time you've done all this, maybe an hour. Um, I've done it so many times I can do it really quickly, but it's not a big job and the output is absolutely amazing. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it or learned something. Uh, good luck with your N Extract Plus, don't forget. My email address was at the start and you're welcome to email me about N Extract Plus with uh, problems or with ideas. Thank you for watching.